Okay, developer diary number two. Uh, since the first video seemed to be pretty well received, um, I guess we're gonna keep going for, for now anyway, as long as I have a little bit of time. Um, in the comments, some people asked, can we see how cubic objects are made? So uh, I wanna get into that, but before I do, uh, you gotta understand some basic things. So I'm here in Blender, uh, just a, a point I want to make is that I'm not a Blender expert. I'm kind of new with Blender. Uh, as I said in the last video, my main 3D program was Modo before, and I recently switched to Blender. I can get things done in Blender, but I'm yeah, still kind of fumbling around a little bit here and there. And part of the fumbling is the fact that I, I use more than one 3D program, so you sometimes forget you know, how do I rotate in this program, how do I rotate in that program, and even though it might seem like the obvious thing to do would be to make the keys standard across all the programs, like go in and configure the key edits and make Moto behave exactly like Blender, uh, I found that when you do that, you kind of mess up the, the default way the program is supposed to work, and um, it actually makes things harder, so it's... It's a little easier to, to to sort of stick with the default key setups as much as you can. So uh, I've done that with Blender. I've made a few small changes to the setup, um, but in general, I, I'm using basically the vanilla install and the vanilla key setup and all that thing, all that stuff. All right. So uh, again, before we go into actually making objects uh, there's a few things that you need to understand and um, I'm just gonna sort of go over some basic things so over here there's a little tab and in here you can see this is one of my uh, settings I have set the scale to 0.5 and um, what that means is if I go into like a side view or top view uh, these little gray boxes here I know are 0.5 so if you put four of them together that's one by one and I happen to know that when you export OBG files from Blender if you keep your object in this one by one area that's the same size as a cube in cubic castles so um, let's just I mean if I could model it any size and resize it at the end but uh, it's just easier to work with uh, an area that I know is correct. So if I come here and I create a cube, and I look at the side view, and I move that so that it's sitting kind of on this arbitrary floor here, that's where a typical cubic object would be made, sitting in a one by one cube on the floor. So when I export that, that's already going to be at the right spot, and it's already going to be the right size. That's, so that's one thing that I think about when I'm starting an object. Another thing is that you'll notice if I go into the edit mode, and I go into the mode that edits faces, and click on these little dots here, and that will select different faces. So these faces, they're, they've got four sides. Uh, the, um, the lines here are called edges, and uh, the dots on the corners, they're called vertices, or verts, and then these flat areas are polygons or faces. So an object in 3D, you can think of it as being like, think of the, the verts as being little balls of putty. So imagine the verts are little balls of putty, and then you put some uh, some straws between them or some toothpicks between them. So you could have here is one toothpick, another toothpick, another toothpick, another toothpick. And so then once you have these four toothpicks together, making sort of a scaffold, then you could uh, take a piece of paper and paste it over top of this whole thing. And that would be your, your polygon or your face. And the piece of paper is like a one-sided mirror. Like from this side... It's, it's opaque, I can see. But if I was looking at it from inside the cube looking out, I wouldn't see anything. Because every face has this thing associated with it called a normal. 
And in the case here, the normals are pointed away from the face. And uh, so the side with the normal pointing away is typically the side that you can look at in 3D. It turns out that in Blender, um, if, I, if I delete this face, you can actually see the inside of the cube. That's just a default of how Blender works. In a different program, you might see through. So Now, the other thing to understand is that when you send 3D data to a, um, a game engine and ultimately to a video card, um, video cards don't work with faces like this. They don't work with four-sided faces. They only work with triangles. Everything that gets sent to the game engine, everything that gets sent to the video card, everything that gets, gets sent to OpenGL or um, Microsoft DirectX is in the form of triangles. So typically, before you send an object out to a game engine, what you're going to do is you're going to triangulate it. So I just hit a key that triangulates the object here. So now you can see the whole object is made up of these triangles everywhere. And if this was a cubic object, it would be sitting on the floor and um, you would never be able to see this bottom part here. And we're always conscious of the number of triangles that an object takes. Because let's say I make an object with a thousand triangles in it, a really fancy object like a statue or something, and I, and I put that in the game. Then if, you know, G-Dog comes along and says, oh, I like these statues, I'm going to put, you know, a hundred of them in my realm. So now you got a hundred times a thousand, and you end up with a lot of triangles. And it might be great on a PC, but then you take the same realm and you put it on a, an older model Android phone, and the player walks in and suddenly it's like really choppy and it's laggy and they don't understand why. And the reason is that, you know, there's just too many triangles for that phone to handle. So we're always conscious when we make objects that people can use a lot of them and we try to keep the number of triangles down as much as possible. Ultimately, it's up to you guys when you build your realms to decide how much stuff you're going to put in it. And, you know, if you notice that things are slowing down, you might want to, you know, not use as many complicated objects. It's kind of a special problem for a game that's a sandbox because you wouldn't, you wouldn't have that problem in a normal single player game because all the levels are designed by the developers and they, they sort of know like what the maximum number of triangles they want in their, in their level is and they keep it, you know, within the system requirements for that game. But with a game like Cubic Castles where you can make any kind of realm you want, so you can make, you can make a castle out of blocks or you could make a castle out of bones and if you make it out of bones it's going to be having a lot more triangles than if you made the block castle and so you can run into this problem where your realm starts to slow down on different devices so uh you can actually see up here currently this cube has 12 triangles because it's two per side and there's uh four sides going around the, the edges here there's two sides on top and there's, there's two triangles on the top and two triangles on the bottom. Uh, since the cube is sitting on the floor always, and since uh, cubic is not a first person camera where you can look up, we typically go down here and just delete these bottom faces because you never see them. If you're normally looking at the game like this. Now, if ever we decide that we're going to put a first person camera in, that becomes a problem. And you'll actually notice that if, if you go into the game and the camera is unlocked and you lower it, you'll notice that, you know, some things are transparent from certain sides. And that's because the bottoms of them have been removed to, to reduce the number of triangles in the scene. Uh, yeah. So before we send any object out to cubic, we triangulate it like this and we often remove bottom polygons. What else can I tell you? Right, okay, so another aspect of 3D models is somehow, imagine this was a, I don't know, small filing cabinet or something. Somehow you'd want to have a texture on here where, you know, you got a picture of a drawer and a handle and then maybe some scratches and yeah, or it could be like a Christmas present and maybe you want to see the wrapping paper on it. So how do you, how do you put a picture on a 3D model? So 
the way this is typically done is you have a flat picture, like a JPEG file or a PNG file, and then that flat picture is placed on the 3D model. But how does, how does the game know, or how does any engine know, or even the 3D render, how do they know what part of this flat image appears where on the cube? And so for that, there's a process called UVing. So the cube has, so the cube has its, its vertices positions, it has its normals, it has its triangles, it has all that data. But there's also a second set of data, which is the UV data. And in Blender, you can access the UV editor by going up here. And there's a UV editing view. It's the same program, it just switches the windows around a bit. And uh, over here, you can see the cube still. If I select all of the faces, you can see that there's not currently any UVs, but I can go here and I can go to the shading and UV section and I can unwrap the cube and it makes a set of UVs for the cube here. And so if this was a 2D picture here of a GIF wrap or something like that, the, the, the part of the GIF wrap picture that's here, if I go and I select just this face here, let's find it. It's one of these, there you go. So this, this part of the cube here, the part of the 2D picture that displays here is gonna be in this part of the 2D picture. And the 2D picture will always be square. That's typical. Now sometimes we don't use the whole square and we can cut off the empty space and that's another consideration. But in general, uh, textures for 3D objects are on a square UV map. So if I wanted, for instance, um, a candle, a picture of a candle to appear here on the cube, I could draw a candle in here and then it, that would map it over to there. You could think of it as actual GIF wrapping. Think of this as being like a piece of paper and then you're going to cut this piece of paper up and you're going to GIF wrap this box with a piece of paper. So different parts of the picture here, if this was a piece of GIF wrapping paper, are going to appear on different parts of the box. and um, the UVing that I did before, where I just unwrap the box using some default setting, this is not a good UV because you, you end up with this kind of sliver here, and then you know this triangle is so small, so you can't draw anything in here. There's no picture in here, and if you did, it would all get stretched out. So the process of making a good UV map is actually a little bit complicated, and we'll probably go over that a little bit later if we make an object. Um, but I just want to explain the basic idea of it, which is that you're taking uh, kind of like a piece of paper and you're cutting up into pieces and you're wrapping it around the 3D object. So that's your UVing. So I think that'll become a little bit clearer when we actually make an object and you can actually see uh, when I UV the object and when I apply a texture to it, it'll, it'll become a little bit clearer. It's a little bit complicated. I think that's enough. For this, I just wanted to go over the basics of what a 3D object is and what the different elements are and how um, you have to think about what you're doing you know, to put it into a game engine. And uh, I think we've covered all the basics at this point. So that's all for now. Thanks. Bye.